battle of uh, Montevideo and it celebrates uh, the battle of Martin Garcia. Mm. You, you may know this from yes. your own history, yes? yes. <laughs> I, I'm still learning. But uh, what about the lynches first? Okay, so do you know that the Gaelic meaning of lynch, the Irish meaning, fish. or? Fish. or fish. 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 Fisherman. Fisherman. The literal translation for us is the sea or mariner. So now we have Admiral de Brown and we have a mariner in the lynches. So we have a little connection there. Um, so maybe some of your forebearers sailed from Ireland to Argentina, the Lynches and the Browns. Perhaps, we don't know. Uh, the Lynch name is most popular in Cork, down in the <coughs> south of the country. But in the history, the Lynch name is very popular also in Connacht. So you would have been a very important family in Connacht. And Browns were an important family in Connacht. Connacht is the area of Galway, Mayo, um, all of the western seaboard, do you understand? Yeah. Am I speaking too fast? No, no, no. You, can, you can understand a little. Okay. So, um, and uh, I also was looking and I see that the, uh, of course, your most famous name is uh, Che. Yeah. Che, che Did I say that correctly? Che. Yes. yes. Yeah, che yeah. Okay. So, congratulations for that, for, for that connection for you. Mm. Um, He's a nephew, sorry. He's a nephew. Direct che. nephew. Yes, yes, I am. Really? Yeah. His father is his uh, brother. My, my father is the brother, the brother of the, they, they were five uh, brothers and sisters. Fantastic. And my father is the last wow. in the first marriage of my grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> 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 Come on. Then you go to the front. Bueno, bueno. So let me speak to you a little of Abraham now. Um, so in 2007, let's come back to this city, to Galway. In 2007, um, the city of Galway was very proud to host your sail trading vessel, the frigate, frig, Frigate Libertad. Yes. Yes. yes, right here on the quayside. Oh. Ah, right? It was the first time a ship of this size was able to navigate into the position. Your capitan was very afraid. <laughs> but, but they did it, they did it. And, 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 and the purpose of this voyage, this long voyage from, from Buenos Aires to Galway, and now you know how long the voyage is, was to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the death of Admiral William Brown. So that's why he was here. Okay? And I attended that ceremony. Uh, it was a beautiful afternoon and a beautiful ceremony. I attended that ceremony with my brother, J.J. O'Hara who was at that time El Presidente, the president of the Admiral Brown Society in Ireland. Oh. And we were special guests of the Capitan. Right. So I think uh, I fell in love with Argentina that day. Yeah. I think so. Uh, now sadly, my brother, um, he died oh. the year after this. Oh, uh, and I was asked to take up the position of president then. So yeah. I had to learn a lot. Um, and, and I have learned the the full story of, of William Brown, a remarkable story. And I have been fortunate to travel to your country on three occasions. Oh, yeah, yeah, three. However, my late brother JJ O'Hara was in Argentina 18 times. In Spanish, it's 18 times. 18 times. So he, he had a passion and he had a, an enthusiasm. And your friends in Buenos Aires and in Mendoza called him El Loco JJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why do we connect, JJ and my brother? Why do or my brother and I? Why do we connect? Because he came from the same small town, Admiral Brown, in Mayo, in Foxford, as we come from. So um, that's our connection. Uh, okay? okay. Strong connection. And that from this location is one hour mm. to drive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ah, we must go to Foxford. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you will be in Foxford. You yeah. will want to go by the time you're finished. <laughs> you will change your itinerary. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to tell everybody the story of Brown. Can you understand me? Yes. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I, I know that Brown is respected and, and indeed he's revered. In, in Argentina. I know there are 1,100 streets called Admiral de Brown. 1,100. And I think 140 schools 
Admiral de Bras. It's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. In Ireland, there's one. Ah. One street. One street. In Foxford. In Foxford. In Foxford. Just in Foxford. Just in Foxford. However, the name is getting bigger. And now, in the capital city in Dublin, we have a beautiful statue on Sir John Rogerson's Key in Dublin after Admiral William Brown. Now, in Foxford, we have a museum, a park, uh, we have a hall, a, a community hall, uh, all dedicated to the memory of Admiral William Brown. And the first item that went there to Foxford was from Argentina in 1957, the centenary of his uh, birth. Your lady came over and presented the people of Foxford with a beautiful bust, you know, like a figure yeah. of, of Admiral Brown. And that was the first time that there was a true connection between Argentina and Foxford. Now that connection is much stronger. Even though you don't know about Foxford before this. No. You know about Lynch's. <laughs> so this is part of this is part of telling the story. Okay. Uh, and it's a pity that sometimes it happens that Irish people who go abroad to other countries and have a big impact in those countries sometimes are not recognized in their own country. I'm sure this happens for Argentinian people too who travel abroad. They may not be recognized in their own country. So this is true for, for Admiral William Brown also, I'm afraid. Okay, so I want to tell you, I know you know the history of Brown a little. You know about the famous battles. You learned about some of this in your school. What you may not know is the story in here of the little boy mm -hmm. who at nine years of age, nine, 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 Okay, I mix up Spanish Argentina and Spanish Spanish, you know what I mean? So, uh, so I'll stick with the English, I think. Uh, so, at nine years of age, his father and William, the boy, leave Ireland to go to America. They leave behind their mother and their children, the other children, mm -hmm. because there is no work in our little town in Foxwood. It's too poor. So they must leave. And think about this, in 1787, 1786, about then, think about the difficulty of that journey from Galway, well, it was from Derry, let's say, in the north of Ireland, all the way to the Delaware River in Philadelphia. That was the journey those two people made. Now, they understood that they were meeting their relations there, okay, relations in, in Philadelphia. However, when he arrived, his relations had died from yellow fever. I think mm -hmm. le fibre amelia. Yeah. I got it right? Yeah. Okay, okay. So you know, so no, the relations had died. So now there's just the father and the ten, nine year old boy. Four weeks later, the father also has the fever and he dies. So now William Brown is alone. At, yes, 10 years of age at the Delaware River with nobody in the world. Nobody. So a captain sees the boy and says, you can be my cabin boy. You know what a cabin boy is? To help the captain. To help the captain. Okay, so he was given this job as a cabin boy and so began William Brown's life at sea. Ten years of age, an orphan. Okay, so over the next number of years he learned to be a very good sailor. And he sailed North America and also South America. So he saw the United Provinces, not Argentina then of course, you, you know what I mean, the United Provinces, he saw that. Uh, and he was a young man then. But think about the time it was. This was the time of the Anglo-French Wars. Yeah. And, and of course, now the air is supreme in this day and age. Back then, the sea, if you had sea supremacy, you controlled the world. So yeah. the biggest navies, of course, were the British Navy. We know all about that. We know about Mac Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we also know about the French, how strong the French were. So they were fighting. And because Ireland was not free, Ireland was still under the rule of 
England. So therefore, William Brown was subject to British rule. And on his ship, now he's 25, 26 at this time, they, the English get on the vessel, the merchant shipping, this is private trade, and they say, you're English, you're English, you're English, onto the boat. You're now joining the Navy. Okay? And that's what William Brown had to do. And I, I, I say the statement that he was conscripted into the British Navy and he detested losing his freedom because he was an Irishman. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Not a, not a British. <laughs> but he did learn from the British to become a master mariner, a very intelligent and wise master mariner. And interestingly, during this time when he was with the British, the French boarded one of his ships that he was on, and he was taken prisoner to France. So he spent one year in prison in Verdun in France. He escaped through the roof. Yeah. And dressed as a Garda, a Garda, a Garda Civil. Yeah. Uh, and, and met his escape to England, not to Ireland, to England. By now he is 30 years of age, three old, okay? And he met and married Elizabeth Chitty. Elizabeth Chitty. Okay? Where was she from? She was from England, from uh, Plymouth in England, which, which is in the south of England. And her family were very wealthy merchants of shipping. Mm -hmm. Smart armor of yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, his dowry, can you explain the dowry? His dowry? Dowry? Okay. Was one ship, please. Okay? So, his first ship he now had was called the Jim. And he sailed this, yes, with his new wife Elizabeth Chitty, who, who was pregnant, oh. from, from England directly to Buenos Aires. In, and that was in 1809, just one year before the revolution. Okay, one year. Now remember, remember. Do you know why he went there? Why he did that? Of course, because his understanding of South America was like we talked about England, that the streets are paved with gold. There, is, there are business opportunities. Remember, William Brown, above all, was a businessman in his head, but he was also a very proud Irishman. Now, so he arrives to, he arrives to Buenos Aires in 1809, 1808, around then. But in trading back and forth, all of the merchant ships then would have cannons in their in the sides of them. So he was used to defending his ship. And others, the rebels in Buenos Aires, knew that William Brown was an accomplished seaman. They knew that he was a, a very able officer of the British Navy. So they knew this. And <laughs> if, if, of course, you know the, the story of the revolution of the 25th of May, 1810. But remember, Brown did not partake at that particular day. His involvement was perhaps four weeks later when the Spanish surrounded Buenos Aires. Do you know this? Okay, with their shipping. And William Brown was approached by the rebels and asked, can you help us? And he had six or seven or ten small frigates, small frigates yeah. against 30, 40 of the, of the Spanish. Large it, Spanish. It's incredible. Only a local <laughs> Irish man would do this. <laughs> but he was intelligent. And he, he did some maneuvers on, on four different occasions just in this one war, which beat back the Spanish. Yeah. And this was the first time that the Spanish grip on Argentina had fallen so much. Okay? Now, to this day in the American Navy, in the Argentinian Navy, in the British Navy, to this day, the young officers have spent time in class learning maneuvers, delicate maneuvers, clever maneuvers that outwit your enemy. These are called 
in Argentina, in England, and in America, Brown Navian maneuvers. This is your hero and mine. Yeah. <laughs> to this day, Brownanian maneuvers, outthinking the enemy. So, Brownanian maneuvers, yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, after the battle, the famous uh, battle, put, put, again, this is after the, 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 the 25th of May, after this day, just shortly after this day, and he has now defeated the Spanish, he is marched into Buenos Aires in triumph. And the music he plays with his band, his small band of, of his fledgling navy, what's the Spanish for fledgling, the baby or the small navy or the, the, the start, a young navy. Fledgling, it's, it's, it's only a young navy. Okay, so the first thing he does is he goes to his, his uh, musicians, right? Maybe one was a lynch, I don't know. He goes to his musicians and he says, play this tune. And the tune is called St. Patrick's Day in the morning. It's an Irish air, but it's a marching air, okay? Uh -huh. Today, that tune is played by your navy every time, all of the time in their repertoire. You will hear St. Patrick's Day in the morning. So now, you understand the importance of this? Who wants to listen to it? <laughs> I can't say that. That's, that's for the lynches. <laughs> so, I'm going to move a little bit quicker now, okay? Just because over his lifetime, as you know, he was governor of Buenos Aires, okay? And he, we say his adopted country, because to us he is always an Irish man. Uh, but think about this. He builds the Navy up, and then he retires, and he goes to, to work on his farm. Okay, so he's really a farmer as well. You know, it's an incredible story of this man. And last year, I was fortunate enough to be in the, your embassy, our embassy in Buenos Aires, and I met with the seventh descendant of William Brown. He is also, I say this, Guillermo Brown, the seventh descendant. He looks like him, he really does. He's the great, and he's like this, he really does look like him. But he is the only one not to join the Navy. The only one, all the way down. Every other one joined the Navy. Do you know why? Because I think he's going to decline. No, he's seasick. He tried to, but he was seasick. Where was he at? The bomb uh, square. I, I, I'm going to tell you now. Yeah. Sorry, so, yeah. we have a, a different question here. Okay. We think because it's, the, the salary was a bit too low, maybe. <laughs> oh, perhaps. And also, the prestige, you know, is lost. It's lost. Before. Well, perhaps it is now. I think it changed. But, but this, Guillermo, sorry, this gentleman that I met is a very successful uh, farmer. He's a ah. very important farmer in his area. It's north of Buenos Aires. But I can't remember the location. It's north, and this is also where Amarante Brown had his farm, north of Buenos Aires. But I, I'd say maybe outside the, the province, I don't know. Perhaps you can find out from the internet. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so I just want to mention to you once the famous Battle of Quilmes. Yeah, I, I'm sure you did this in your history also. And if I, if I mistake, this was against the Brazilians, yes? And it's amazing to think that Brown at that time, again, the, the government is formed, they do not invest in ships. It's, it's, I don't understand why, because they're so exposed to the sea. The nation, the new nation of Argentina is so exposed to the sea, and yet they have the powerful Brazilian just north of them. They have the French, the Uruguayans, they have the Spanish, and yet they don't invest in their navy. So, so to finish about speaking about Brown, think about this. He's it's 1841 and he's retired. He's finished. He's fought the Brazilians. He's fought the Spanish, and and yet he because there is insurrection in your own country, he's not quite famous. He's he's still being treated a little bit like he could go with the government or could go with the rebels. They're a little bit wary of this, but yet. 
the government called him back into service at the age of 64. You know, like the Beatles song, when I'm 64. <laughs> like, when I'm 64, I'm not getting on a ship. And this time he goes to fight Uruguay. Now, incredibly, five years previous to this, Uruguay was created. And who had to set up the Navy? William Brown. <laughs> so now he has to go and fight the Uruguay Navy. This is true. Yeah. And he fights them. And their most popular leader was Giuseppe Garibaldi. I don't know if you know. He's a famous yeah. Italian. Yeah. yeah, Garibaldi. And it is told about Garibaldi two things. One, one that uh, Brown had his inner sights in the ship. And once Garibaldi raised the flag, Brown allowed him to pass. This was a very noble thing to do. Mm -hmm. And Garibaldi was very appreciative of this. And in Brown's later years on his farm, Garibaldi came to see him as a private citizen. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's nice to see that. Um, so he lived out the rest of his life in the famous, help me with this, Casa Amelia. Amelia? Casa Amelia. Yeah, this is the yellow house. Yes. yes. Uh, and and uh, of course, a replica of which is the yellow house, which is now the museum, the Navy Museum for yeah. in Buenos Aires. Yeah. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I've been to La Boca. To, in La Boca. Yeah, I've been to see it. It's, it's beautiful. It's very nice. So, to finish, William and Elizabeth, his wife, did visit Ireland one time, just once. Mm -hmm. A very arduous journey. Like it was 1847. He was 70 years of age. And he came back to visit just like the Lynches, okay? <laughs> but you came on the plane. Yeah. So he came back to Ireland by ship, came to Southampton to visit her family, and then sailed to Dublin and drove across the country or rolled across in horse and cart right across the country to Foxford, mm -hmm. to my home. And at that point, point yeah. Oh, his, his one brother, his brother was there. He was very young at that time. But he was considered 70 at that time. He, he was 70. He was 70, was 70. of course. But yet his brother recognized him. His brother knew him. And he hadn't seen him since he was nine years of age. So his mother was gone. His brother was even younger. Yes, yes, a little younger. A little younger. Now, uh, um, so, so what you may not be aware of is, think about the year, it was 1840, 1847, uh, yes, 1847, thank you, which was also the second year of the Irish potato famine. So can you imagine what he saw in the west of Ireland, which, like, Ireland lost two million people. Okay. Two million people. That, they died. Uh, of yes. Some other million left the country. So one we, million died, one million died and over one million left yes. the country. And half, yeah. One and a half left the country. So, people, so that was a difficult for him. Now, we have a record that he gave a substantial amount of money to famine relief, to, to mm -hmm. Daniel O'Connell's fund. O'Connell had just died as well, but to Daniel O'Connell's fund to help. So we knew his heart was still very much Irish. So then he, he, of course, went back to Buenos Aires on, on March the 3rd, 1957. He died. And at the time of his funeral, he was given a full military funeral. And Mitre, who was the president, president. Yeah, not at the time, he was the Minister of Defense at the time, and became the president later. Yeah. And at his graveside oration, he stated, uh, Brown, standing on the deck of his boat or his ship was worth an entire fleet to us. Which was a very moving thing to say. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the Recollect Recollect Cemetery is where, where his monument is. And the first, the first time I saw it, I said, yes, it's green. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what disappointed me was, written on the glass, it said, a British singer. Oh, so I tried to scrape it off. <laughs> so we have formally requested your government <laughs> yes, to change this. Did they change it? But in truth, of course, he was British. Yes. 
That is factually correct. Mm -hmm. The Malvinas will always be the Malvinas, never the Falklands. Uh, that is also correct. Uh, <laughs> okay. You have sent a letter. Of course. Mm -hmm. To the... Yes. It uh, yes. has to be uh, corrected by the family. Yes. Well, well, I'll come to the family in a moment. <laughs> Let me finish the, the little... The, the, there are three times in the year when the Argentinian Navy march into the Recoleta Cemetery and address Brown's grave. Yeah. On the 3rd of March, which is the day he died, on the 22nd of June, which is the day he was born, and what other day? St. Patrick's Day. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd catch you out. And of course, St. Patrick's Day in the morning, they play that at his gravesite. Ah. Isn't that a lovely, fitting tribute to William Brown? Uh, so, I'll take questions in a moment, but I want to say three things to you. One, are you going back to Dublin? Yes. 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 Okay, please. And it, so, for you and your family never to get seasick, I have the solution. At the foot of Admiral Brown's statue, on his right foot, with your foot, you rub it with your fingers. With your finger. They say you'll never be seasick. Great. I don't issue guarantees. <laughs> okay, the next thing I want to say to you is, if you can, please make time to visit Foxford. Speak to your yeah. organizers and, and think about this. How many more days do you have to stay? Tomorrow. 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 To Dublin or to? To Dublin. Oh. Is it on the way to Dublin from here? No. 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 It's, it's, it's direct. No. It, it, it's, it's, it's only two hours from Dublin to, from Galway to Dublin. It, but it's an hour south of that, so it's not. It's a, so you know the next time. Okay, okay please. The north to the south. And to, the north. To, to, to the north. To the north. To the north. North of Galway. Yeah. Where? Well, north. I'm going on the first to Fox the north. To Ashford Castle. Oh, you're heading for me. You're heading uh, in the direction. Yeah. Yeah. Ashford yes, Castle yes, is yeah. beautiful. You can go. You can go. Okay. No, no, I think okay. Yes. I think we'll we'll probably will give you some business cards. Yeah, I think so too. And the last thing to say to you is that, you remember I spoke about the, the, the seven descendants, the farmer yeah. who didn't yeah. go yeah. to sea? Okay, when we were in Argentina, my late brother JJ commissioned a film. And JJ died and the film was, was lost. So I approached the filmmaker in Argentina and the filmmaker in Ireland. And together we produced a documentary called JJ E. Abra. JJ and the Admiral. Yeah. So we we, we JJ and the Admiral. So we have that video if but it's not dubbed in, in English in Spanish. It's it's only in English. So Pauline has them there for 10 euros if you like a memento. It's, it's no there's no difficulty yeah. with that. Please don't feel you must. Um, and, and my last thing to say to you is and my last thing to say to you is please tell your friends about Ireland. Tell your friends about Foxford. The one thing we're going to do, and if somebody in this room is in education, please pay attention to me for one moment. We are creating um, a program which will be called Corja y Amigo. Corja and Amigo. Corja is friend. Ah. So, friend and friend, okay? And very established in Ireland are, uh, is, is a, a program called the Gilbert now. It's where teenagers leave their homes and spend maybe three weeks living in the west of Ireland where we speak fluent Irish. Mm. Irish is the first language of the yeah. family, you see. <coughs> and they stay with the family and they're immersed in Irish culture. These are Irish children, of course, so from Dublin or from Cork. And they're brought to various areas called Geltach, which are Irish-speaking areas exclusively. We are creating this in Foxford, and we're calling it the Corja y Amigo program for Spanish-speaking people to learn English. Oh, nice. And because of our connection with Brown, we're reaching out to Argentina. Already, wow. we have had people from, um, what's the one, Rosario, Mendoza, <laughs> yeah, from the University of Rosario, and some of the younger students from Rosario. So, already it's beginning. Do you have some information about Yes, of course. I can. I can give you my business card, and you can have a look yes. at that. So perhaps when when Benedict is is a teenager, oh, we live in London. So. You live in London. Yes. Send them over. Yeah. <laughs> but his English should be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, this is, are there any questions? Because I, I know you want to get moving on your, on your talk, and thank you for that. Have you any questions that, that about Ireland uh, as it relates to Brown, or have I, have I explained everything okay to you? Yes? Yeah? We did have a recreation of the Battle of Martin Garcia during this year's St. Patrick's in Plaza San Martin. You did? Which is quite near the monument. Yes, yes I know. And they played I also the, the, fed, the fed music. The music. Ah, so you recognize it, yeah. I, I was at that statue. I, it, it's a very big statue. Is that the one in, yes. in, in Mendoza? Or in, in, no, 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 in, Nearby, in Plaza San Martín, yes, has a hill inside. Oh, I, I know where you're speaking. Yes, yes, yes. And we, and we knew from the Southern Cross, which is a um, local newspaper. Oh, I know it. I read it all the time. Well, well, the English bits. Yes. Well, she works there. Oh, you worked there. there. Oh, you worked there. Oh, I'll speak to you in a moment before you go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, I, I just want to know the last thing. Uh, is it so that you have a program, an interchange program? The uh, interchange program? For the, for the yeah. teenager, he, he's a boy, I, so still a boy. That's but okay. He's By 11 time, years old. By the but time he's 14 or 15, we, want, we have a program. But we live in Spain. That's okay. Also with Spain, but, as well. But the English that's spoken on the west coast of Ireland Okay. It's the best spoken English in yeah. the world. Okay. Uh, you hear my English? Yeah. It's yeah. not so yes, bad. Yes, yes, yes. You can understand it if you think it does. Thank you. <laughs> so this is what we're hoping to teach to your children.